So this is going to be lesson six in chapter five. So lesson five, six. And we're going to call this using the Pythagorean theorem. Today's date is the 23rd. So I'm going to give you ones that I have come across in my own life. Ball gets stuck up on the roof. In order to reach it, I gotta put a ladder firmly on the ground so I can crawl up that ladder, get on the roof, and get that ball down, get that cat down, get that tree branch down, whatever it takes. So that's an example of when we see Pythagorean theorem in real life. So you've got a ladder against a building. Where's the right angle? Where is it? I can't hear. Where is it, Susie? Here? Okay. So it's where the house and the ground meet. Because if the house is not perpendicular to the ground, your house is crooked. And you slant. And that's not good. So that's a situation that I can think of that would involve a right triangle, and therefore I could use Pythagorean theorem to figure out one of these missing pieces. Okay. Um, how about this scenario? Somebody's got a kite. You might say, well, where is Pythagorean theorem? There's your right triangle. So, kite in the air. Uh, we use Pythagorean theorem in the geometry class in combination with something else called trigonometry when we don't have pretty numbers. Um, and that could be you have a cliff of some sort, water, and a boat, and you have a person standing here. And we're trying to figure out how far that person is from being able to see that boat. So again, where's the right triangle? Okay. So sighting a boat from a cliff. And it doesn't have to be a boat, it could be a lot of things. Um, so often what happens in these types of problems, the angle is what we get. We use trigonometry to help us. But we can also, the trigonometry would help us figure out the measurements. We would use the angle measurement to help us with this. But this happens a lot. Um, oh, a little sports one. What sport does this go with? Baseball. Yeah. So we have sometimes trying to figure out some sort of distance here. So something dealing with a baseball field. Um, this one actually I've used when I uh, was ready to buy a new TV and I had my entertainment center. Um, I don't know, do you guys know how they measure TVs? Yeah, they, they measure it on a diagonal. So that number isn't how wide it is or how tall it is, it's diagonally. 
And so I have an opening that's a rectangle. So I know the length and I know the width, but they don't sell televisions by lengths and widths. You know, a 43-inch television, is it's diagonal. So I had to do Pythagorean theorem to figure out what was the largest television I could find to fit this spot. And let me tell you, I got it. I got the biggest TV, like with maybe an inch to spare, because I did my math right. I got the biggest TV that I could fit in that spot, okay? So televisions. Sold by the diagonal. Those are all things I can think of that I've come across just in my own life in which I needed to you know Pythagorean theorem. Okay? So we're going to go do a couple of them and so that you can understand what you're going to do. So number one thing is... Let me look at your homework and see if they give you a diagram with each of your pictures or each of your problems. And the answer is yes. So luckily for you, you don't have to visualize the situation. They visualize it for you. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, that doesn't always happen. So I'm going to do a couple different ones for you. Let's do one with a building and a ladder. So first situation would be uh, just solve. And you've got a building that obviously sits on the ground. And you've got a ladder of some sort lean, leaning against the building. Okay. So we're going to find the length of the ladder. Uh, and round to the nearest tenth. Okay, so some information is going to be given to us in our diagram. We should recognize, again, where the building meets the ground is where the right angle is. The foot of the ladder is going to be 8.75 feet from the building. So this distance is 8.75 feet. Where the ladder touches the building... So this is going to be 18 feet. What we are trying to solve for is the length of the ladder. So you are going to need to give me a variable definition, and you're going to say x is the length of the ladder. Now, what role does x play, a, b, or c? It plays c. So I'm going to put my numbers in, and I'm going to have the 8.75, and I'm going to square it, and I'm going to add to that the other leg, which is the 18. I'm going to square that, and that's going to be equal to my x squared. So you again you guys are going to be really lucky that you're going to be given your diagrams and so the first thing you have to do if they haven't filled in everything for you which i think they pretty much have identify your right angle because you need to know who's a who's b who's c next if they give you words in the problem you need to now label the appropriate places with those numbers okay and this case they've labeled and again on everything i see all your diagrams are labeled now, unfortunately, we have to do the math out. So I'm going to do 8.75 by itself. So we get 25, 35, 37, 43, placeholder. We get 35. We get 49 and 3 uh, is 52. And then 56 and 5 is 61. And we have two placeholders. We have a 40, we have 56, and 4 is 60. We have 64, and 6 is 70. Ooh, that's pretty. 
Now, there was actually four digits after the decimal point. So my answer also is going to get four digits after the decimal point. And I do not round to the nearest tenth until I finish with all of my math. Okay? Now, what is oops, 18 squared? 324. If you didn't notice, it's on that chart. And that equals your x squared. So I get x squared equals, and we have 324, and we end up with 400.5625. So what do you think that answer is going to be when I take the square root of both sides? What did we write down on our chart? What's the square root of 400? 20. 20. So our answer is going to be probably right around 20, right? And I would venture, because we have square root of a half is going to be a quarter, and so we, or square root of half, excuse me, is going to be smaller than a quarter. So that's going to be like zero something. So if we had a round to the nearest tenth, we would say that would be approximately 20.0 feet is the length of the ladder. Okay. All right, let's do another one. Uh, we've got two planes that are flying, one's above the other, and we want to actually figure out how far apart uh, or how high off the ground one of them is. So I'm going to draw probably the lousiest plane you'll ever see in your life, but that's okay. There's a plane. It looks like a whale in the sky. Here's another plane. Another whale in the sky. Here's your right angle. We're told that these two planes have a distance of 12 miles from each other. This direction. And this distance is 10 miles. The question is, How high off the ground, or how, excuse me, how high above that plane is it? Because the reality is if the planes are too close, altitude-wise, that, that one can create turbulence for the other and throw it off course. So this is where, you know, air control people, this is what they're looking at. Because this is what's causing problems, okay? So is X, A, B, or C? Yeah, we call him B, we could call him A, doesn't matter. He's definitely not C. So we're going to say X squared plus, what would be the other term that we would add to the X squared? What's the other leg? It would be the 10, not 12. Don't listen to her. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Hypotenuse, folks, longest side, opposite the right angle every time. That's your C. Okay, now we do our math. So let's go X squared, 100 equals 144. Subtract 100 from both sides. We get X squared equals 44, but I'm not interested in X squared. I'm interested in X. So, look at your chart. So, tell me what it says. 6.633. Okay. Our chart has that number. See, this is how that chart's going to be helpful for you guys. So, I'm going to round this to the nearest tenth. What would my answer be? Okay, it would be approximately 6.6. .6. So, we would say that the distance between the two planes it 
is a, about, and remember, anytime we have an approximate answer, we about, we have to say about or approximately 6.6, .6, and what was the label on this one? Miles. Okay, and that would be the answer. Again, I don't know what the safe, I'm not a air traffic controller or an air person, so I don't know what is the safe distance for two jets. Um, hopefully that one is. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's do one more because this last one deals with geometric shapes and you have to be able to see the geometric shape. Um, again, they're going to give you everything. So this scenario that we have deals with a circus tent. So what's the kind of dashed is what is behind the scenes. So it's got two circles. So basically this is a cylinder on the bottom and a cone on the top. And we're going to be talking about surface area and volume of those shapes soon. But what they're interested in is trying to figure out the distance from the top of the tent. Okay, how tall is the top part of this tent? So they outline this shape for you. Okay. The right triangle, or right angle, excuse me, is right here. Where the height and the width, or the radius, um, are what's given to you. So they label some numbers. They tell you that this is 50 feet. They tell you this is 61 feet. And this is what we're solving for. Okay? So they just want to know that X part. So X is a leg, 50 is a leg, 61 is the hypotenuse. So we do our math. We have X squared plus 2,500. Look at your chart. What's 61 squared? So now you're looking in the middle column. 3720? 21. 21. Okay. See, the chart can be very handy. We're going to go ahead and subtract 2,500 from both sides. And we get x squared equals, let's see, 1, 2, 2, 1. So the problem is that. I don't have, and this one, let's round it to the nearest whole number. Um, this one, my chart's not going to help me. So this one, in order to get this number, you would have to probably use a calculator if you were given this problem on the homework. Uh, but what number times itself is close to 1,000? 100. Okay, 100 times 100 is going to give you 10,000. 32. Okay. Um, 32 times 32. Okay, so let's try that one. So we get 4, 6, placeholder, 6, 9. And we get, uh, let's see, 12. Okay, that's close, but I don't think close enough. So let's keep looking. 31. Okay. 31 would go smaller. You want to get to 12, 21. So look at your list. Don't just shout out numbers. You've got a list there that can help you, 12, 13. I forgot about the square column. Uh, we can go that direction, too. So then we get a placeholder, 12, oh, 35. 10, 6, 5, 1, 1. Yeah, okay. 35. So 35. We get 17, placeholder, 15, 10, 5, 12, 8. Is that right? 35. 25, 17, placeholder, 15, 10. Hello, maybe I could learn how to write so I can even read. So then I get 2. Oh, look at that. Yep, that looks right. We get 35 is about, is 1225. We needed an answer that was about 1221. So this looks like we found a winner. So we would say... 
that the top part of the tent is about 35 feet high. So we can use that chart to help us looking for what number times itself would give me close to that 1221. So that chart will help us with this as well. Okay? All right, so that's what you get to practice tonight on your homework.